Hello everyone, my name is Jihan Nam. I'm from KAIST. In this presentation, I'd like to introduce a security enforcement network type called Bastion for container networks. This work is joint work with KAIST and SRI International. Okay, now let's get started. Let's first think about what is a container. A container is an abstraction at the application layer that contains everything we need, such as code, libraries, and configurations in order to run an application. And containers are much faster and lighter than virtual machines since they share the same host OS kernel and run right on top of the host OS like typical processes. With such advantages, these days the use of containerization technologies particularly for the scale of instantiation of product microservices has grown so fast. However, along with this popularity, there have been so many security issues around the container world. For example, according to Three Warriors State of Container Security Report, 60% of organizations already experienced some security instance in 2018 47% of containers they deployed had vulnerabilities, and 52% of organizations have difficulty in investigating security issues in their containers. Likewise, I think these statistics represent our current state in container security well. Then, what kinds of security solutions are there for containers these days? I think we can categorize current security solutions in three major parts. Container image integrity, application isolation, and runtime threat detection, based on what they focus on. And through these solutions, we may be able to improve our container security. But I'd like to highlight that they mostly focus on containers, which means that they still have less concern about the security of a container networks yet. So here I'd like to first show how a container network looks like. When we think about microservices, we can draw them as shown in the upper figure. However, in reality, the containers for microservices are connected to each other like the lower figure. Especially in Docker environments, there are multiple bridges for each microservice and containers are linked to the bridges for their microservices. Then how about Kubernetes environments? In the case of Kubernetes, although containers are logically grouped according to microservices, all containers are actually connected to a single ORI network like the lower figure as Kubernetes aims at multi-node environments. From this container networking architecture, some of you may notice that current container networks probably have some security problems due to their architectural design. So in this work, we point out five security challenges in current container networks. First, we lose the context of a container as soon as a network packet from a container is passed to a container network. We can think that a container network is a small version of our legacy network, which means that once a packet is delivered to a container network, more specifically at the host side, it's like the packet is in the middle of a network, somewhere between network switches. Thus, we cannot actually guarantee where the packet originally comes from, and it is possible that some attackers for the network packets will be help of any other containers. Second, there are some limitations in IP-based access controls used by container networks, especially IP tables. Current network policies are mostly defined based on the IP addresses of containers. Even though some secure solutions use labels instead of IP addresses to define network policies, such labels still need to be changed to specific IP addresses internally. Likewise, 
Since all access controls are done by IP addresses, container networks are still vulnerable to layered attacks. Third, as IP tables is located at the host side, all network policies for containers are managed inside of IP tables in a centralized manner, which means that the number of network policies will rapidly increase as the number of containers increases. And eventually, we can face some performance issues when the number of policies is beyond hundreds due to IP tables design issues. Fourth one is, containers can easily access the services running at the host side without any restriction. All containers have the gateway of a container network for external accesses. However, the gateway is actually located at the host network namespace, which means that a malicious container can scan host services and even exploit them in a malicious purpose through the gateway. Finally, there is a special container called a network privileged container. It doesn't have actual privileges, but shares a network namespace with the host. So it can directly expose container services through the host IP addresses. Here, a critical security concern in a network privileged container is that the container can actually access all network interfaces in the host, including those for other containers. Furthermore, current security solutions do not care about such containers, even though they have a great power in container networking. For better understanding, please refer our paper. In the paper, we explain these issues with screenshot-based proofs. Okay, so far we talked about the security issues in current container networks. Then, how can we make our container networks secure? To answer this question, we propose Bastion, that is an intelligent container-aware communication sandbox for inter-container networking. In this work, we focused on how to protect network threats that abuse the security challenges we discussed and how to isolate the container networks in a more fine-grained way. Then to, act, to achieve such goals, we designed three key components, batch manager and network visibility and track visibility services which are two key services of Bastion's security stack. Here is a general container environment, and this shows the overall architecture of Bastion, especially where Bastion is actually deployed. We see that Bastion is deployed at the network interface of each container, and additionally at the external interface for the overall network in the case of Kubernetes. Here, we don't modify any existing container platform or container network, but all network traffic is controlled at the closest locations from containers and delivered to destinations through Bastion instead of a container network for a security purpose. Now, I'm going to briefly explain our key components, and let's first start with the Bastion Manager. The main roles of the best manager are collecting all network information for deployed containers through container platforms like Docker and Kubernetes, and managing Bastion security stack for each container. First, in terms of container network information, it includes container deployment configurations and network policies for each container. And based on such information, Bastion first builds a container network map for all containers. Then it automatically discovers inter-container dependencies among those containers by figuring out what kinds of containers are deployed and how they have some dependencies on other containers. And finally, it builds an inter-container dependency map like this. In the meantime, 
Bastion deployed the security stacks for newly created containers and update the container network and inter-container dependency maps into their security stacks. If there is any change in the container network and inter-container dependency maps for the existing containers, Bastion also updates them into the security stacks for the containers whose information needs to be updated in runtime. Now we have all information we need for fine-grained network control and network isolation. So let's talk about the security services Bastion provides. As the first security service, Bastion's network visibility service restricts unnecessary connectivity among containers. To do this, two key functionalities are introduced to handle container discovery and intercontainer communications. In terms of intercontainer networking, container discovery is the first step to identify other containers that would be communication targets using air pre request. However, as we get as you guess, current security solutions do not control non ip based communications. The, this process can be exploited by malicious containers. So, Bastion first filters out any unnecessary container discovery that doesn't pertain to the present container's dependence map. Simply, since all network information for dependent containers is in the container network and dependency maps, Bastion blocks any container discovery for unknown targets by directly handling all requests for container discovery by itself, rather than broadcasting the request to the container network. Unfortunately, although the direct ARP handler Handler prevents containers from performing unbounded topology discovery. Its coverage is limited to container level isolation, which means that it does not address malicious accesses among dependent containers. So, to further restrict the reachability of containers, Bastion implements container aware network isolation. We can simply think of that. This is a kind of an access control mechanism specifically designed for containers. Since all accessible services for dependent containers are in the intercontainer dependence map, whenever a packet comes from a container to Bastion, it inspects the packet with the given accessible services. And if there is no match, it simply drops the packet. Otherwise, it forwards the packet to the corresponding destination. Next, the track visibility service provides point to point integrity and confidentiality among container network flows. As the first step, Bastion conducts the source verification of incoming packets. In the case of current secure solutions, they simply use the source IP and MAC addresses in pack headers. However, we can easily guess that they can be forced by malicious containers. So as an alternative solution, open switch may be used with incoming virtual ports or source verification. However, open switch doesn't support a NAT operation, which means that we need to specifically define NAT policies for all possible individual flows between containers. Thus, unlike such solutions, in Bastion's source verification, it leverages the kernel metadata to verify the specific sources of incoming packets. Lastly, current Linux network stacks cannot prevent the exposure of intercontainer traffic from other containers. If you are wondering why they cannot prevent such exposure, please refer our paper. Anyway, if a malicious container has a capability to redirect the traffic of the target container to itself, it can monitor all traffic from and to the target container. 
So to implement least privileged trap exposure, Bastion utilized the recent Linux networking features, XDP and EBPF, and directly inject network packets from a source container to a destination container. So the network packets actually bypass the container network at the host side, which means that no one can see the network traffic between the source and destination containers from the container network. Okay, now I'd like to show how our security services can prevent containers from network attacks. Before that, I'm introducing an attack scenario that shows the current state of container network security. Here, there are two microservices, and the lower one is allowed for anyone to access, and the upper one is only allowed for registered users to access. Here, the basic idea of this scenario is that an attacker tries to access the microservice for, for public, and get into one of the containers in the microservice. Then while monitoring network traffic coming from a register user, the article replies the contents request by the user with the fake contents, and the user actually received the fake contents. Here, I'd like to show the steps that the attacker carried out. Once the attacker got into one of the containers for the public microservice, the attacker first scanned neighbor containers. And we can see that the attacker found all containers, not only in the public microservice, but also in the microservice for registered users. Then the attacker spoofed the, a target container and redirect all network traffic of the container, and the attacker inject a fake contents while dropping the original one. So finally, we can see that a user received the fake content instead of the original one. These attacks are quite straightforward, but what I want to say here is that they are still feasible in the current container network. Then how can Bastion prevent containers from such network attacks? First, let's see how Bastion restricts the topology visibility of the attacker's container. We see there is no restriction on the container's reachability without Bastion. But once we deploy Bastion, as shown in the lower screenshot, the attacker can only see the containers that it depends on. Second, in terms of how Bastion hides the network traffic from other containers, here we assume that the article already spoofed the target container and could redirect all traffic of the target container. And as shown in the upper, sc upper screenshot, in general, we can see the network travel of the target container at the attacker side. However, once we have, once we deploy Bastion, no packet is actually monitored at the attacker's container. By the way, here to show the difference, we intentionally allow the source to destination flows to be visible, but destination to source flows to be hidden by Bastion. Third, in terms of packet injection, when the attacker injects a fake packet, in the case, in this case, a TCP reset packet into a container network, the packet is naturally delivered to the target container if no bastion is deployed. However, as soon as bastion is deployed, such fake packets are immediately dropped at the network interface of the article's container due to Bastion's source verification. At this point, point, you may wonder if the overall network performance might be degraded when Bastion is deployed, since Bastion performs additional security inspections. So let's see how it performs. Here, 
This table shows the throughput of intercontinental communications within the same host and across hosts. You can see that compared to the baseline, the overall throughput were improved when, best, when we uh, deployed Bastion. Since Bastion's direct forwarding mechanism particularly made all network traffic between containers bypassing a container network, more specifically bypassing the network step at the host side. But in the case of intercontinental communications across hosts, the baseline was quite low, so the throughput improvements by Bastion were not that high. And we also deployed Bastion in several container networks and saw the performance improvements. As we expected, the, in the cases of all container networks we used, we could see Bastion shows better performance than the existing container networks while providing strong network security. Okay, now let's sum up this presentation. In this work, we have investigated the security of current container networks and discovered several security challenges that are critical in container networking. Then to cover such security issues, we have proposed Bastion which can intelligently isolate intercontinental communications in a more fine-grained way and effectively mitigate later attacks that abuse the security issues against peer containers. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please contact me by email. Thank you.